morning, everybody. It is Tuesday, April 14th, 2020. And today we're going to build on what we started yesterday. Um, and this is finding the constant of proportionality from a table. So we worked a little bit with the table in yesterday's assignment, yesterday's video. Um, and we actually did work with constant and proportionality a little bit already. We just didn't, I didn't refer to it by name. We're going to explore that a little bit today and see exactly what that is. So example one here. Billy likes to make lemonade using the lemons from his grandmother's trees. There's a proportional relationship between the number of pitchers of lemonade Billy wants to make, and we're calling that X, and the number of lemons he needs, and that's going to be Y. So what this is saying is when Billy wants to make two pitchers of lemonade, he's going to need eight lemons. If he wants to make three pitchers, he's going to need 12 lemons. Four pitchers, he'll need 16, 5, he'll need 20. So we know this is proportional. That's some important information. Um, in fact, let's look at that on the next slide. Whenever you have a word problem like this, I know they can be a little overwhelming. I talked a little bit about that yesterday. And I kind of said, just ignore it, you know, figure out what's important, and then ignore a lot of the, ignore the extra words. And that's true, but I also want to make sure it's clear that I'm not saying ignore reading the problem. You need to figure out what's important first. Okay, so I underlined everything I thought was important for this question. Okay, so we have a proportional relationship. That means that all of these ratios in each row are going to be equivalent. All right, we said we had 2 to 8. We could write that like 2 to 8, 3 to 12, and so on. We know these are all equal because this is a proportional relationship between x and y. So we look here in the question. It tells us that the number of pitchers of lemonade Billy wants to make, we're calling that x. We already talked about that. The number of lemons we called y. Okay. So let me erase that real quick. Now, what else is important here? Well, this bottom line. And this is probably the most important part of, about the whole question. What is the constant of proportionality? Well, that's what you need to actually find to get the answer right. And then something else is that you need to write your answer as a whole number or a decimal. With, when you're using something like IXL, something on the computer, you need to be super careful with that. All right, I could mark you off maybe half a point for that in real life. On the computer, it's just going to give you the answer wrong, and you're going to have to redo it. So, anyways, we I said this was the most important part of this whole question. What is the constant of proportionality? But there's a problem here. We haven't talked about what that is. So, let's get to that. Constant of proportionality. Um, this slide, it might not make sense yet, but hopefully it will by the end of the PowerPoint, end of the video. Um, the constant value of the ratio of two proportional quantities, x and y, usually written as y is equal to k times x, where k is the constant of proportionality. Now, we did this yesterday. Right? For several of the questions, you had to put an answer is an equation, something like this. Well, you should see that looks a lot like this. In fact, the only difference is that we have a 4 here, we have a k here. Well, k 
is actually just a number. So in this case, for this equation here, where y is equal to 4x, the constant of proportionality would be 4. k would be equal to 4. So this is just like yesterday's assignment. The questions are just going to be worded a little bit different. You're going to have to just make sure you understand it. So let's move on. We'll come back to this a little bit later. So there's a couple different ways we can think about this question. So the way we found our equation yesterday was a method like this. We looked at each row and we knew that if it was a proportional relationship that we would multiply each x by the same number to get y. So let's look at the first row. We have a 2. How do we turn that into 8? Well, we times it by 4. And it's proportional, so that has to be the same case for each row, each ratio. 3 times 4 is 12, 4 times 4 is 16, 5 times 4 is 20. So what we're seeing here, if we think about the word problem, is that for every two pictures that we're making, it's going to take eight lemons. Now we can actually simplify that down a little bit. What if I want to know how many lemons it'll take to make one picture? Right? Knowing how to make one of something is useful. Right? A lot of times you compare to one. Think about miles per if you're driving. Your speed is miles per one hour. Or if you're going to the store and you buy some some fruit maybe you're paying per every one pound. Right? It's like a dollar per one pound. So that's that's called a unit rate when we compare to compare to one. And to do that, well we divide we take our take our y here and then we divide by the x. So for every, if we have eight lemons over two pitchers, well, that's going to tell us that for every four lemons, or it's going to take four lemons to make one pitcher of lemonade. So this is another way we can look at con the constant of proportionality. But well, we've already solved the, this We've already solved this question, what they were asking for. It's just 4. We multiplied by 4 each time. That's our constant of proportionality. And this is telling us that there's 4 times as many lemons, y, as there are pitchers x. So let's think about this question though in a different way. Let's think about it kind of like we did yesterday. or maybe with that definition I showed you, you know, with y is equal to k times x. Right, we're all getting, you're all getting older, so we need to start thinking a little bit more about x and y. I know they're maybe a little scary right now, but it, it doesn't have to be. We're working our way there, and this is a way to think about it. x and y are related to each other. In this case, you take each x and you multiply it by 4, and that gives you a y, your y value. That's how they're related, at least in this case. As you start learning algebra, you learn many, many other ways that x and y can be related to each other. When it comes down to it, we're looking for different patterns. This is the pattern we see in this case with a proportional relationship, times 4, each time, each row. So let's think about this 
with an equation. I said that we had to take all our x's, right? Our x's are everything in this column, and we multiply them each by 4. And that gives us our y over here. So that's what we, we can write that with the variables, or with two different variables. We know that we're taking our x, whatever we decide to plug in. That's what we have right here. And then our constant. Well, that's just a number, right? It's always the same. So that's just a 4. And then our y, well, it depends on whatever we decide to plug in for x. Right? If we find y because we take whatever x was and times it by 4. So in this case, our constant the only thing that's staying the same every time is 4, our constant of proportionality. And you remember, look at the bottom of the page here. This is like that, this is from that definition I showed you earlier. Well, proportional equations are written in the form y is equal to kx. So y is equal to 4 times x. So k is equal to 4. All right. Let's move on to the next example here. So again, this is just like yesterday's IXL. So you have to read the question to see that. Right? Just because it's a new assignment doesn't mean you can't get a similar type of question. So let's read this from the top. And I'll give you a chance to pause the video and try out the question, um, try out the question before I uh, show you the solution. So to help the environment and make some extra money, Julia takes her empty cans to cash not trash recycling shop. The shop pays cash based on the total weight of the cans Julia brings in for recycling. This table shows the relationship between the weight in pounds of the cans Julia brings into the shop, and we're calling that X, the number of cans she brings in, and the amount in dollars that the shop pays Julia Y. So Y is how much money, how many dollars she's getting for the number of pounds of cans she's bringing in to recycle. So that's what this table is showing us. That's what X and Y are. So if she brings in eight pounds of cans to recycle, she's getting two dollars from Cash Not Trash Recycling Shop. So at this point, pause the video, see if you can find the answer from here. And don't just take a guess, you should feel 100% about this answer. So take a second, try it until you do. All right, welcome back. I do hope you tried it. Um, again, I'll remind you of this constantly, but it is very, very important that you're trying out these questions on your own. Um, this is a great time for you to do that because you can see right after what you did right, what you did wrong, and and why. And the why is the most important. And, um, when you make those mistakes, that's when that's when the why is really gonna that's that's when that's really gonna click with you. That's when you're going to have those, you know, eureka moments, those light bulb moments. You know, you see them in the cartoons. So, anyways, let's, let's look at what's important here. Really, um, this is just like the questions yesterday. Yeah, it's important to know what X and Y are. And, you know, we thought about the question. I already talked about what was going on. 
So at this point, we already have an idea of that. Everything else we need, well, that's already down here. That's in the table. And then we know we need the final question here, what we're trying to actually answer. So now that we know this all, just ignore it. Get rid of it. It's, you know, just distracting at this point. So, from here, let's look at the table. We said it was proportional. So we saw this yesterday that we could use division as well as multiplication and check to see if um, a relationship between x and y is proportional that way as well. So if we take our x values, it's like when x is 8, well, when x is 8, we divide that by 4, and that tells us that when x is 8, y is equal to 2. And then we do this for each case. And if it worked here in the first row, it's going to have to work in all the others if this is proportional. And that's what we're trying to answer. 8 divided by 4, that is 2. Check. 16 divided by 4, that's 4. Check. 20 divided by 4 is 5. 44 divided by 4 is 11. This is true in every case. You can always divide by 4. So, therefore, this has to be a proportional relationship. Yes. Now, these questions, um, you're going to see some of these have multiple parts. So, you can very well see this question ask you for the constant of proportionality after your k. Now, I said division works, but you need to you do need to be careful. If you want the if you need the constant of proportionality, you're going to have to do an extra step if you decide to divide here. And I'll show you that right now. So, yeah, we're thinking back on y is equal to kx. Um, we know that this is how we find our constant of proportionality. We need to figure out what we need to multiply x by to get k. Notice that there is no division sign in this equation. It's multiplication. That is very important. So what we need to do if we have a case like this where we divided each time well we need to take one extra step we need to think about okay if we divided by four what could we multiply by instead to do the same thing and this is something I've been trying to remind you guys of in class and I will keep doing division is the same thing as fractions and it's the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. Right? If you divide by 4, that's the same thing as multiplying by 1 fourth. Think about it. If you have 100 cents, well, you know, if you split that into 4 quarters, each quarter is going to be 25 cents. Now, if you do the same thing, if you divide 100 cents into four coins, you know each coin would have to be worth 25 cents. It's the same thing either way. Right? One fourth and four are just reciprocals of each other. Divided by four is the same thing as multiplying by one fourth. And that's what you need to know in order to get this final step right. So we're multiplying by one fourth each time, all of our x's. So eight times one fourth that gives us two, right? Or eight divided by four that would also give us two, right? Sixteen times one fourth that gives us four. All of these check out. They have to because it checked out over here. So from here, all we have to do is write our equation. We know that this has to be of the form y is equal to k times x. And in this case, our k has to be that 1 fourth. That's how I got this here. 
And then if you think about this in units or unit rate or ratio, well, what we found here is that if we take, if we have eight pounds and it's only $2 for those eight pounds, that means each of those pounds are going to be 25 cents, right? Four quarters. Think about it, if you had eight quarters total, well, you know, four quarters would make one dollar, four more would make two dollars. So that's what we see here. That's that final, that final conversion. And this part here is very important, very easy to make a mistake with, and it's why if we go way back, um, this part here, sorry. Um, write your answer as a whole number or a decimal. So some of these questions are looking for that. This is a different question, but um, I believe that second part had something like this as well. So don't do all this work, don't get it all right, and then make that final little mistake at the end, because then you're going to have to redo it, and it's just going to take longer. And that's why I say you should always take your time writing out your work. I promise it'll save you time in the long run. The more you do that, the better habit you build of writing out your work and showing it. You're going to save hours upon hours, and you're going to get better. It, you're killing two birds with one stone. So that's just something to think about here. Um, it's something you could really work on right now. You have a lot of extra time. Why not? Why not work on getting better at something? So at this point, I'll let you guys go. Um, I hope you have a great rest of your day. Um, please message me if you have any questions. And don't be afraid to give me feedback. If you like the videos, don't be afraid to tell me. If you don't like them, you know, let me know as well. You know, give me a reason why. Don't just say they're boring. Right? Give me a good reason why. Um, and you know, I'll work on, I'll work on making improvements from here. Okay. So, take care. Have a great day.